Warm welcome to all of you. This is Akya Stani from Smart VRC. And uh, good morning, all of you. So whatever data we collect from you at the time of registration of this webinar, uh, this remains with us. We are not sharing it with anybody else. So rest assured, we are not going to uh, send you spam messages either on email or on uh, WhatsApp. And at the most, we may send you about three to four messages in a week. So that is all about our privacy policy. So the today's stock, uh, soon you will come to know the name of that stock. And this is from the, only from the illustration purpose, this is not an advice to buy your stock. Duration of this webinar is likely to be about 40 minutes. Yes, there may be um, some very forward looking statements, but don't go by that. As I said, there's only an analysis, there's only an uh, illustration. There are many other factors which play a key role in deciding the fate of the share price in the future. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. This is a standard warning, and this is essential from the SEBI's regulation point. So these are all about the disclosure and disclaimer, and uh, uh, regarding uh, we are and what we do, or other details. Objective is one and only one to help investors to create wealth. Maybe through the recommendations, maybe through the webinars, like the present one, and maybe through the investment insights in other forms, maybe in the form of articles. So, uh, to begin with, I am very excited to share with you uh, regarding one of the stocks uh, which we analyzed last year in one of such webinars, and the name is Avantel. And I am very sure many of you may not have heard this name uh, because is a small company and the webinar date was 30th of April 2022 so about 11 months ago we covered this stock and at that time the price was 1358 after that company has declared 3 to 1 bonus so adjusting for bonus the price at which we analyzed this stock was about is 340 and the current price is 598 that gives about 76 percent returns in about a year or so or that is pretty good and the best part is we have not covered this stock anywhere in our any of our products till date yes uh, that is a very um, you might be feeling that it is very strange and it is not. Uh, my subscribers may say that why it was not included in our products and why you have uh, discussed only in one bit. So the reason is at that time, uh, the liquidity was very low and uh, something about 10,000 shares were traded daily. Uh, the stock is listed on BSC only. It is not listed on NSC, uh, but then after this 1348 price, company has declared 3 to 1 bonus. That means liquidity has increased many, many times. And not only that, uh, there is a further story to this. Board is meeting to consider a stock split on 23rd June 2023. So the company is very much concerned about the, uh, about the low liquidity of the stock. And one may not be surprised if the company also opts to get listed on NSC. Because in general, the volumes of NSC, depends on NSC are much higher than that on BSC for all the stocks. So this is how uh, uh, the stock becomes a mega, mega better. How a small company grows big and simultaneously the liquidity increase, liquidity increases, maybe because of the because of the bonus or a split and all these things because of the listing on NSC also and all these things. So what happens when the liquidity increases? When the liquidity increases, the big players, HNIs, or I can say uh, uh, foreign portfolio investors, mutual funds, they also want to participate and they want shares in maybe probably in lakhs or sometimes in crores, but those kind of liquidity is not available on the stock. 
markets. And that is the reason why companies uh, many a times declare split and bonus just only to increase the liquidity. And there is one more um, good story. And that is the company has backed an order of rupees 23 crores from the Ministry of Defense. Yes, a good part of its revenue is derived from uh, supplies to the defense company, defense uh, ministry. And uh, you, may, you may think that 53 crores is a small amount. Yes, in absolute terms, it is not a very big order. If I tell you that the revenues of the company for one quarter are something about 50 to 55 crores only. So that is a very small company. So 53 crores order means a revenue for one quarter. Not only that, about a year back, it had a, uh, it had an order book of about three years. So company is doing pretty well. And we are not going to discuss much in detail. Just I wanted to give you a flashback. And uh, last year when we analyzed this stock, so here, this was the uh, price, as you can see, something about 340 rupees. Here we analyzed, and then the share price fell. It fell to around 260 also, from 340 to 260. And we received feedback that uh, the stock, whether the feedback was the stock advised by you. I once again tell you, it is not an advice. It is only an analysis. There is uh, one more feedback which we received from our participants was that the stock has already moved up almost 100% during the last couple of months. And now you are very late in analyzing this stock. So there is uh, this late word is, is only in future you come to know whether we were late or not. So uh, also it is, is the future story which determines the share price. It is the earnings of the company, how they grow over the years that decide that decides the uh, fate of the share price. As you can see, for many years, the share price was going below 100 rupees until unless during the bid of another, uh, after the four or five months in 2021, the share price started moving up. And of course, we are not, uh, we are not at all concerned with the share price movement. What we are concerned is the earnings. And for the earnings, we have to wait for at least, uh, at least for, one and a half or two years, then only we analyzed. We analyzed its stocks. Then only such stock enters into our watch list because we want to be very, we want to ensure that there is minimal risk and maximum return. So that was about the one thing. And uh, there is one more quality that this stock is outperforming the PSC Sunset. So you can see from last uh, one and a half years whether I should say from the last two years, it is outperforming the PSCs and sex and by wide margins. So coming back to the today's webinar for the company, this company was incorporated in 1981. So it is about uh, 40 years, more than 40 years old company. Launched in, IPO launched in 2004. Today it is the second largest forging player in India with 40 years of experience. So who is the first, who is the largest forging company in India. Can you write in the chat box quickly? Which is the largest forging company in India? Right. It is the Bharat Forge. Bharat Forge is the number one forging company in India. And the second largest player is Ram Krishna Forging, which we are going to discuss today. And this, it is a manufacturer of uh, variety of auto and non-auto components, but predominantly it delivers to the automobile company. You will see uh, further about this. Company has a global presence with sales and support office in four continents, and now it is it has forayed into EV also. Presently, it drives about three percent of the turnover from EVs. Company is acquiring is into the process of acquiring a startup engaged in EVs and. Uh, we will see more about that later. Uh, among the market customers are the Tata Motors, um, Daimler, Ashok Leyland in India. And we talk about the overseas market, then Volvo, EF, Scania, Oman, UT Trucks, and Ford are its overseas customers.
So as good as 79% of the turnover is derived from the automobiles. Uh, railways gives about 3% of the revenues. Then mining, earth moving and farm equipment, about 10%. Oil and gas, 2% and others, 8%. Mainly it is focused on automobiles. In times to come, it plans to reduce its dependence on dependence on uh, automobiles. So coming to the revenue pickup for FI22 and FI23. In the domestic market, turnover was 1744 crores. In the export market, it was 1233 crores. So almost 40% of the turnover, 35 to 40% of the turnover is from the export market. So I place a good importance to the export revenue because it, it shows uh, the level of the quality of the products manufactured by the company. And it also gives you, uh, uh, it also gives a diversification, diversification of the revenue generation vision to the company. As far as the capacity utilization is concerned, you will be, you will be wondering that for the last quarter, that is the fourth quarter of FI23, uh, the capacity utilization, as you can see, the average capacity utilization was something about 2%. So it is running at full capacity, yes. And uh, not only at full capacity, but uh, this ring rolling and forging, it is working, it is running at more than 100% capacity. And I need not have to worry because it has already undertaken the expansion program. And one of the part of the expansion is going to be was supposed to be started in June. We'll see next. So this is the export revenue, as you can see, is growing, growing exponentially. Coming to the shareholding pattern, promoters are holding good stake, 47%. FDIs are seems to be more confident than mutual funds, holding stake of 15% compared to mutual fund stake of over 4%. But there is a good chunk from the other investors. Some SNIs are also, also holding good stake. And individual investors 22 percent. Coming to the financial highlights, uh, this is the return on capital employed. This is a very very important indicator. This shows that how the capital of the company is being used to generate the returns. How much generates? How much are the returns generated from the capital employed? When I say capital, capital means the equity part as well as the debt part. So this is a very strong indicator for the last three years, as you can see, has moved up. Coming to the return on equity. So return on equity is a return generated on equity. When I say equity, it is not equity capital. It is equity capital as well as the reserves. So it is a total equity. That is also, uh, that has also grown up very well. Fixed asset turnover. So it is using its assets very efficiently and the efficiency is increasing year by year, as you can see. And coming to the net to EBITDA, so it is falling down considerably. This is also a very good sign. In a nutshell, if I show you this single screen, it is more than enough. It shows you how the company is using the capital, how the company is earning how the growth is panning out across uh, along the last past couple of years. So that, that tells a lot of things. And this is also evident from the last four years financial performance. As you can see, the revenue has almost reached to 2.6, 2.7 times during, uh, from 2020 to 2023. And uh, depreciation is constantly uh, rising. So this shows that the company is constantly adding the capacity or acquiring new companies. Then the net profit, net profit has zoomed from 9 crores to 43 crores. Equity capital is constant. So there is a very interesting observation. Equity capital is constant. In fact, equity capital has declined from FY20 to FY21. And this is because of the share buyback. So company is not looking for uh, uh, funds from the shareholders in the form of rights or uh, qualified placement. Company is not um, okay. It is rising. It has raised the debt level, but 
at the same time interest as a percentage of net profit is declining very very fast and eps as a result the eps has grown from under 1 rupees to 15.43 rupees for the recent year dividend for 2020 and 2021 it has skipped the dividend as we can see because the interest costs were very very high compared to the benefit. so we thought of uh, considering the sources financial resources but then it rewarded very well then very next year and also last year so this was all about the financial performance what is the story ahead so before um uh, before i shall tell you what is the story ahead because it is very very interesting story not only in terms of the increasing the capacity but also in terms of the acquisition of couple of for that, we take a very small pause. Uh, let me tell you what we do. So our philosophy is smart, smart as it stands for the story. As I said, story is the, is the main thing because it is the future story which will decide the share price movement, the future earnings. Based on that story, there will be earnings. So uh, solely we are concerned about the company about the company's story, about the company's management and everything and anything about the company. We are less focused on the market because we are always analyzing or advising, not advising, okay, analyzing and recommending the stocks only for medium to long term. So we are very much focused on the bottom sum. Second is the market. Market is your best friend. It gives an opportunity to buy good stories at attractive prices, attractive valuations, and to sell at high valuations. Coming to the assessment, we use PEG ratio assessment of the stock. is finding the worth of the stock. We use PG ratio. This was widely used by Peter Lynch, and we have been using this for the last more than 25 years, and it works wonderfully well. Rational, yes, our approach is always rational, always logical, and we only try to take advantage of the illogical market movements. Yes, we should give a time, sufficient time to take the compounding power its own way. So these are our uh, three main products, smart gains, smart multibagger, smart SIP. Let me tell you in brief, smart gains, we advise one stock uh, every week on Wednesday before 11 a.m. and target returns are about 25 to 30 percent. In smart multibagger, we recommend about 12 to 15 stocks in a year. So on an average, every 25 days, you get one recommendation and uh, the target returns are 30 to 40 percent analyzed. In smart SIP, we recommend one stock every fifth of the month and the target compound returns are 20 to 32 percent. This here it is medium, it is low to medium, it is low. Holding period, it is 3 to 24 months. In multibagger, it is 2 to 5 years. And here it is long term. Yes, we also provide you the sell exit recommendation because if you if we give you only a buy recommendation, then how you will exit. Also, how much money you should invest? That is a very crucial uh, question. So we also provide you how much you should allocate in a portfolio. In all the three cases, you get a research report. Also, is same bottom sum and uh, all the recommendations during marketers. Also, once you subscribe, you get an access to our past recommendations and subscription price is very, very nominal. All these subscription prices for one year and inclusive of all taxes and duties. Sorry, not inclusive. <laughs> it is exclusive uh, of GST. So, subscription for smart gains is 7200 plus 18%, smart multibagger 9500 plus 18%, and smart SIP 4400 plus 18%. So, these are the various uh, ways and means through which we help investors to grow their wealth. The webinar which you are watching, if you want to watch the past webinars, you can always um, uh, visit our website at the Smart Academy. You will find Smart Insights, and here you can watch our uh, recording of the webinars. Yes, uh, I am also an author of the book Way to Billionaire. This book is available in English as well as Gujarati. And purchase from our website. Website is smart VRC. So, how we are different? 
we are truly qualified not only in terms of in terms of the academic qualifications uh, but also in terms of experience rather i should say the successful experience so once upon a time i was at a senior management level in dhl and i quit the job just because you were passion <clears throat> the greatest advantage with us is to find the worth of the stock and we are doing this job pretty well with good accuracy and uh, also we provide the closed loop service so buy as well as sell uh, recommendation so this was all about us with this we come to the end of the small pause so we were uh, discussing about the ram krishna forging we saw about the company about the financial highlights now the story ahead what is the story ahead story ahead is very very exciting as you can see the forging capacity addition of 18000 tons by june 23 so hopefully in this month they would be able to expand their capacity by 18000 metric tons and uh, further by 38000 in the month of september so with this capacity the company management has stated in their recent um statement that this capacity will be sufficient for the next phase of healthy and robust and uh, there are reasons for it because company is also acquiring couple of companies couple of other companies and uh, this will result in a uh, ramp up plus operating leverage will result in faster improvement in profit so this is a very big statement company is expecting improved profitability in times to come because of the economies of scale so this was in the near term because as we saw the capacity expansion in this month and capacity expansion october month coming to the medium term what is the story medium term there is a company with the name of acil limited and uh, there is i think a delhi based company and company or rk forge company is going to acquire this company tenders to this company have already approved the resolution plan given by uh, rk forge ram krishna forging and uh, this vision will give the ram krishna forging uh, a window to the tractors and pv sectors for supplying crank shafts as well as cam shafts and this equation will be financed through internal growth and debt no equity division there is one more company which it is uh, under acquisition and that is gmt auto this was a part of mtech group many of you may be knowing this name mtech auto resolution plan has been approved and uh, this company mtech auto has got six plants in jamshedpur and two plants in dhawa that is in the western region and this will help the company this ram krishna forging to foray into a lot of brands uh, in the oil and gas industry and this equation will also be financed by intellectual sector now from the medium to long term this is a very significant development which has taken place a couple of months back in consortium with chitagon vegans the company has received a huge order of about 10000 crores for manufacturing and supplying the wheels for indian railways there is a big order and this for a very long term and the company will establish a plant for the production of about 2 wheel wheels 2 lakh wheels per annum expected to start operations by fy26 years hence so this is a story from medium to long term perspective and there is one more story and that is it will it will acquire 51% voting rights in suyo manufacturing company limited this is a startup which is engaged in a uh, mid drive bldc ipm and ac induction based motor topologies startup engaged in power plant solutions for electric vehicles for this for evs so company looks to be very serious in the ev segment and uh, company will invest it grows over the next 5 years in this startup and hopefully it will be able to generate about 500 crores by the end of 2020 so this is again for medium to long term so there are a lot of uh, triggers left the story and let's see uh, regarding the valuations everything looks pretty well as of now so this is stock we advised not advised as we recommended 
this stock we recommended uh, and it was around 190 rupees on 22nd april 2022 last year and since then this is the story so after recommend uh, recommendation it fell to around 150 160 levels and then at that time we included this in svp and it is still there in svp so this was the recommendation 27th of april 2022 and uh, our at that time, the price was 190 and target was 300 rupees in 13 months. Coming to the valuations, turnover to equity capital ratio is very high at 100. That is very favorable. And results to equity capital is also pretty high at 80. Yes. And uh, yes, stock is high. Our bonus may not be in, uh, in a near term because still uh, interest outgo is very high. Maybe in a year or two years time, it may consider yes, because the company has the habit of rewarding the investors. It has gone for share buyback. It has returned back to the dividend and good dividend declaration. Interest as a percentage of profit is declining. Yes, there's a good sign. Considering the healthy growth rates, strategic equations and management operation, there is a good probability of revenue and increased growth of 20 to 20. We are projecting. Management has not said like this. It is our own projection that company should not have any difficulty in uh, growing its revenues at the rate of 20% and its profits by 25% the next couple of years. So ruling share price is 392. This discounts the FI23 earnings by 25.4 times and this gives a PE to growth ratio of 1.02. So oh, let me tell you a little more about PE to growth ratio. It is a relative measure how the earnings are growing and how the PE is growing. So as per Peter Lynch, renowned and the stalwart of stock market, is from US. So as per him, a PE ratio of unity is or less than unity is very favorable. But then he is in the USA and we are in India. India, we have higher growth rates, but still this stock is available at uh, easy to growth rate of unity. And it is expected to grow at the rate of 20 to 25%. What it means is like this. If for the next three years, of course, if for the next three years, company continues to grow at the rate of earnings, grows at the rate of 25% and E ratio remains the same, what it is today, then you may expect about 25% return for the next three years every year. But then again, this is just an assumption. This is not a recommendation. This is not a price. This is just from the analysis point of view to give you an understanding about the valuation of the stocks. What is the flip side? Yes, every stock has a brighter as well as the dark side. Here is the dark side. Despite declining interest costs as a percentage to profits, the debt is high, no doubt about it. And fast equations may create its own challenges. So one has to be very, very careful. When to exit? Uh, this is a standard formula. When the story starts to slow down, and uh, that is an alert. And when to exit? Uh, you can exit, or you may start slowing, uh, start reducing your weightage based on how. Oh, um, speedily the story slows down and uh, maybe possible that you may get a better stock with a better valuation with a better story that can also be a reason on this stock going to the smart word uh, this is a quotation from Philip Fisher if you are in the right companies the potential rise can be so enormous that everything else is second no doubt so um, we, we have come to the end of the today's webinar. Those who have joined for the first time or those who are not receiving the uh, webinar notifications and other insightful articles, uh, you are requested to please send your name and city uh, on this WhatsApp number. Number is 9755920780. We are sending the messages via what, WhatsApp broadcast list and such messages are received if and only if you have saved our number in your mobile. So 
to next um, part is the question and answer session you will get an opportunity to ask your question so you can raise your hand via the reaction box or also you may write your question in the chat box thank you thank you very much So kindly ignore the last screen, it was by mistake. Yes, if you have any queries, you can write chat box. So, sir, RK forging in bull case EPS will be in FI28. What would be the EPS in FI28? So, I have given you enough uh, inputs. I have, I have uh, listed it that there is a good probability of EPS growing at the rate of 25%. And the last EPS, I think it was about 14 or 15 rupees. So, even if it is 15 rupees, so you can you may double it by FY26, because that is the rule of 72. So uh, that way in FY26, it would be 30, again, about 60% up. So that would be around 45 to 50, between 45 to 50 by FY28. That would be the yes. Is it time to invest in EV? So EV is just a technology transformation. So don't be hurry in uh, investing in EV stocks. It's not like that. It is not like that in within a year or within two years or maybe in within five years, everything will change. To EV. It's not like that. It will take its own time. And the companies which are successful today may not be the same case, maybe one year or two years hence, especially as you might have seen that there are many EV players, um, which are not the traditional automobile players, be very careful. Don't pay hefty valuations, hefty P ratios for acquiring just a EV stock. What are your views of European recession? Will it affect India growth? See, it depends on from the company to company. If a company has high exposure to the European uh, European region that then yes definitely it will have an impact on its performance and performance means on share price also there is a probability. How you feel about the valuations in small cap and mid cap from here on? So as I said during the webinar also and um, it is our uh, philosophy to concentrate on the company. So we are highly concentrated on the company and the relations and the story ahead. As far as the, in general, if you ask me, then the relations are just okay. I can't say that they are overvalued or undervalued to a great extent. But one thing is sure, and that I, that I quoted during my last webinar also, there are many small companies which have reported exceedingly well um, growth in net profits. That is probably, I am saying it, I can say for the first time. Yes, I am into the market since 1989. But the kind of the kind of growth they have reported, that is fantastic, fabulous. But most of those companies are uh, from the small category. Some conclusions, sir. First, you spoke about Avantel, then RK Pony. Okay. Avantel was the stock which we uh, analyzed last year. So, that was all about the last year's, or what was our analysis and what is today it is in terms of the story, in terms of the, in terms of the uh, share price. So, today's analysis was based on RK Pony.
So it is a direct message to me. What is your price, tar price target of RK Holding? I am very sorry. This is not an advice. This is not a recommendation. It is coming in frustration. Whether you should invest or not, it is up to you. Which is better? Avantil or RK Holding? Both are into a different category of uh, companies. Avantil is a very small company. Very small company. But it has got very good clients. RK Forging is also a small company. If you compare with Bharat Forge, it is a very small company. It has a turnover of only about 3,400 something crores for last year, full year. So it is also a small company, but not very small company. And it is acquiring lots of other companies. It is difficult to compare. Their markets are different. And also, if you are an HNI, then if you try to buy, Large quantity in one thing, then it's really difficult. If something wrong happens and you want to exit, then you can be in trouble. Name of the company. Okay. Talakshi, sir, uh, your question is I was not able to connect in time due to some technical problem. Can you please give me the name of the company that has been discussed today? Uh, the name of the company is. Uh, Ram Krishna Forging, and uh, I am very honored to see you this webinar. Vimal uh, Choksi, sir, from Mumbai. Sir, Ram Mastani ji, thank you for a simple and well presented webinar business. As always, a great learning from you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, <laughs> Once again, I am very pleased to uh, welcome you in this webinar. Uh, you took uh, so much of time to attend this webinar. I am I am very happy. It's clear. Please share your views on hospitality sector, especially the hotel stocks. Uh, hotel stocks are doing well, and there are a couple of reasons because of the COVID. Companies were Hotel sector was not doing well, and many of the medium and small hotels got completely wiped out in this uh, during this COVID time. And uh, as a result, the big hotels now are enjoying not only good occupancy but also good rates. And that is why these all the hotel listed hotel companies are reporting fabulous returns. Uh, but this high growth rate may not continue in future. That is just my reading and the current P ratio is reasonable and in fact for some of the stocks it is. Thanks for the enriching session. Thank you, Jarish. Uh, your opinion on uh, paper stocks? So, paper sector is enjoying very good returns due to um, I can say due to one of uh, advantage in terms of the raw material, but this advantage may not on growing in times to come. This is a one-time advantage. And as such, the growth of the paper sector per year is very, very low. I think it is um, something about 4% or 5%. So I'm not uh, very, I don't hold very encouraging uh, future for this uh, paper companies that I can say. The Lakshi sir has given one more feedback. I would like to read out. I have already made good money from your previous recommendations and I am very much thankful to you. For the same, your study about the fundamentals is excellent and very useful. Well, let me tell you, Talakshi Gosar sir is uh, very, very senior, and I think he is the person uh, who has so much of experience that uh, I have not met anybody else. So many years of experience, and he has the he has the quality of explaining the complex things in a very simple form, any very simple and interesting stories.
so uh, there is a lot of a lot of uh, thanks and praises in the chat box. I'm getting you. I cannot read out all the names. Mm, your views on banking and financial sector? Yes, I guess we are very positive on banking and financial sector. More so because from the tier two, um, tier two cities and tier three cities, the growth is coming back, and that works well, especially for the NBFs. Is it better to exit IT companies now since its prices are falling? So don't go by the prices alone. As I said, look for the story. What is the story ahead? That should be the way to look at the, uh, at the stocks. So those who are subscribers, they know very well. We reduced our exposure to the IT sector about 8 to 10 months back. And now we have a very minimal IT exposure. So that should be the way, not because the share price is falling and we should make an exit. That should not be the only reason. Does RK Forging has any exposure to Europe? Yes, it has. That exposure is not very significant. Moreover, um, that company with which it has a contract kind of thing is a very big. And even if there is a slowdown, I don't think it will impact the growth of uh, RQ Poling in a very significant way. Your views on FMCG and pharma. So um, in general, Stay away from pharma. In FMCG, companies are enjoying very good margins, but that uh, scenario may not last very long. Maybe in the first quarter also, the FMCG companies will report good results because of the uh, because of the fall in raw material prices and the stability of the raw material. Your website name. Uh, our website name is smartverc.com. Smart S M A R T V E rc.com can i see your earlier videos yes you can go to the, our website there in the top menu you will find uh, a link with the name of smart academy under that you click to smart insights there we have all the recordings of the uh, webinars Your views on defense railway and PSU stocks. Um, in general, uh, we stay away from the companies wherein the government has a uh, big role in deciding the profitability of those companies. So in general, we stay away from sugar, we stay away from fertilizer, we stay away from basic products. Regarding the defense and railway, yes, these are defense, especially we are very, very positive. Also on the space, uh, these are the these are the sectors which have opened up. Government has opened up these sectors, and we see a lot of potential in these sectors. And the beauty is, uh, there are there are large number of small small companies which are uh, supplying components to the defense as well as the space sector, and there is a huge upside potential. So uh, I have gained a lot by following your recommendations. Thank you, sir. I hope you deliver the same kind of returns for the next decade. Why not? Um, we have, as we, as I grow old, I will become more and more um, wise as we all become wise. So I hope uh, I should be able to deliver the same kind of returns. Uh, but yes, as you said, at times, I also wonder that uh, we have been able to deliver our 26% CAGR and SBP for the last uh, 22, 23 years. Um, sometimes I also 
I also get worried. Will it be able? Will I be able to deliver to continue this 26% CAGR in future? But the thing is, continue, and we are becoming more and more wiser also. Yes, I found that some stocks underperforming for a long time and then suddenly started outperform. That difficult to catch. What you have to speak about this? As I said, we are not bothered about the share price moment. What we are bothered about is the story. What about the earnings per share and all those things? So to give you an example, um, in smart gains, we recommended one stock, Talbros Auto. I think we recommended at around four hundred thirty or four hundred forty rupees. It fell down. Came down to around 360, 370 rupees. Uh, we had to exit from the pick of the week because there uh, the holding period is pretty small. Uh, but purchased the same stock in SBP, and when it fell to 370, we added more in SBP. And today that stock price is 630, 640 rupees. As you said, there are many companies which are underperforming here suddenly outperform. So it, this sudden spurt is not because of any. Um, non fundamental reason. There are always fundamentals playing in the background. So, Mr. Ashok, can you unmute yourself? Mr. Ashok. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. I, I would like to become subscriber for multi baggers. Yeah. So, what is the procedure that I wanted to? Sir, uh, there are two things. One is you can visit our website, smartbrc.com. Okay. And then there you can, um, there is a link with the name of subscribe in yellow color appearing on the okay. right side. Okay. And there you have to fill uh, some bare minimum data. And once you okay. make the payment, the subscription will be automatically enabled. So you can okay. log in and you can have a uh, look at it. No, uh, through, excuse me, through WhatsApp, can I become subscriber by payment by WhatsApp? No, sir. WhatsApp, uh, you cannot do. Okay. Or direct, uh, directly pay by phone pay? Okay. I have shared the website name in the chat box. And also, you can uh, WhatsApp us. At the number which we have shared in the chat box, or you can that write is, down the number 97. Ah, yeah, I am having that one. Yeah. yeah so yeah, you yeah. can you send me a request there, I will speak to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Okay. You will be analyzing forthcoming IPO? No. We have stopped okay. analyzing IPO. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Ashokji. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know if I become a subscriber of all, all the three. Yeah. Totally, how much it will be that? All the three? The total will be around 18,000 rupees. Okay. Minimum, how much I have to invest then if I become subscriber for all the three? Sir, if you have an investment of more than 10 lakhs, then only I would recommend you to go for all the three. Yeah, yeah I am ready to subscribe okay. that much invest. Okay. I, will, okay. I will speak to you, sir. Kindly uh, send me your mobile number on my uh, WhatsApp. I will speak. Okay, I will send you by WhatsApp my number. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, how RK capacity plan will be funded? It is through uh, debt only. Uh, regarding, uh, you will be analyzing forthcoming IPOs. No, we have stopped analyzing IPOs because, because again and again I say, in an IPO, uh, the management knows everything and investors know very little. And as you might have observed, there are there are a good proportion of IPOs which are underperforming or overperforming with respect to the price they have offered at the time of IPO. So because, as I said, before IPO, there is very minimal uh, requirement from the regulation point of view. But after IPO, you have to follow a lot of regulations by SEBI and stock exchanges. So you have to submit many documents. So everything is available. But uh, previous to IPO, not that much of information is available to investors to analyze. 
your view on data models for investment uh, i am very sorry if we do not discuss any in, uh, investment or recommendation in the webinar metal sector uh, i don't see any anything very strongly positive for the metal sector solar companies your view on solar companies yes solar companies should be able to continue to do well but then depends on any other factors like this or generators or the solar equipment manufacturers or the component suppliers what is the future of chemical sector it is reasonably good uh, most of the big players they are continuing their expansion plans so it is very much clear that uh, prospects are going to be but only from the long term point of view real estate in general i don't prefer investing or advising on directly into the real estate companies but the secondary suppliers uh, they are a better placed position like the paints like the steel i'm not recommending any of these things but i would prefer to invest in in company rather than in a real estate company like that i am uh, that there is a message i want your message on gold and silver oh we don't advise on gold and silver i am not not good so uh, we have come to the end of today's webinar thank you for so many questions and uh, uh, a message from yogesh kumar bondi once again a very informative and interesting update from you thanks and congratulations to you and your team for the dark horse i keenly look forward to attending your webinars best wishes to you and your thank you very much to all of you for sparing your valuable time thank you